Okay, so our next speaker today is Mark Tapalo, Chief Information Security Officer at Asina Retail. So Mark, turn it over to you. Welcome. Thanks, I'm gonna stand here. Uh, thanks, Chris, I, uh, that's good. Uh, I learn stuff every time I listen to Jack, every time I listen to people's presentations, so um, I am honored to, to be speaking here. I think my goal for today is if you can take a, a nugget or two and, and take it back to the organization and apply it um, where it makes sense, not everything makes sense for each of our organizations, for each of our um, programs, but that's really, you know, that's really that goal. And, and when I speak with organizations and companies about uh, FAIR, the, there's two questions. So my slides are, are pretty simple. All right, let's see. My slides are, uh, oh, this is a build, isn't it? That's too bad. I'm just going to build it out. How do you use it? And then my next slide is how do you roll it out? Or, or you know, how do you roll it out to the organization? That's going to be my, my next slide. So I, I think, for me, simplicity in that KISS principle really uh, rules the roost for us. So third party, um, our portfolio, our IT portfolio, as well as our security portfolio from a uh, cost justification, what should we prioritize, uh, where do we put our resources, um, and then the third piece is in the audit discussions. Um, those, each of these pieces and parts, I'm not gonna drain every one of these bullets, but um, each of these have aligned us with our business. In my 22 years of security, risk, forensics, take any niche you want within our, within our, our industry, nothing has um, changed the perception of security the way that FAIR has, has allowed us. And so, uh, as Chris had mentioned before, our first use case wasn't a technical use case. It was uh, an administrative control with our third parties where we took uh, the liability and we transferred it back to uh, our, our vendor community. And so that was a first for us. I also did it in uh, another organization that I worked with. So I'm going on two companies and trying to implement uh, FAIR to varying degrees of success based on uh, how you look at it. So I've got some scars and, and wounds. Um, but that was really big for us to justify this is the value of our data. This is the value of this contract. Uh, third party, you're going to take that versus what we are. Um, it's also helped with our vendor selection as well. So the front end and then the, the back end of that. Um, one of the one of the key things for me is it helped enable the conversation around a consistent calculation and then consistent communication of risk within organizations. Everyone feels as though they can do risk. Um, the bald tire scenario I run every single meeting just because it shows the uh, personal flaws that we all have with risk, right? If, you're, if you haven't been exposed to FAIR. So um, I would start every single meeting with the bald tire scenario. If you don't know what that means, look it up. Um, if you're familiar with FAIR, you've, you've seen it, you've heard it. But um, it, it really highlights the idea that um, when we, FAIR highlights the idea that when we see risk this way, we view it differently in that that comment was a real comment from one of the presidents of our businesses of, I've never seen it this way. There's no way I'm signing off on that. And so my experience is executives, boards of directors, that when you roll up the right information uh, or, or in the right way, they make good decisions, right? There's smart people running our businesses. The, the audit piece and the audit conversation, for me, this is where it really um, showcased uh, alignment with our business. We had uh, our external auditor who is part of our FAIR discussion. So they are in our discussions. They help us do our loss uh, tables. They are in a tough spot with an industry that is based on IT general controls with the future of an industry that is based on risk and uh, great frameworks that we're, that we're running today. And so um, they proposed that we had a material 
uh, weakness. I know I put significant deficiency there. I wasn't sure what where uh, this slide deck would end uh, or would land in a year or two. I didn't want Asena being associated with a material weakness, but they were proposing a material weakness. So we stepped in and started analyzing um, different scenarios, and it went from a material weakness to maybe, maybe a deficiency. And so what that did was it, the business saw us uh, take on external on it and to some ex extent internal audit. Um, it showed us the it showed us um, modeling and doing the analysis needed to really drill down and challenge some um, deep held beliefs uh, about audit in the organization and some of the the general controls. So that helped. Sorry for the builds. Okay, uh, again, I'm not gonna drain each of these, but um, the KISS theory for me is, you know, okay, how can we roll this out? Uh, not being a statistician, not being a mathematician, um, this just made sense, fair made sense. And so start with what we know, whatever your background is. Um, you talk the talk, we begin, we begin with IT, um, I stay away from enterprise risk whenever I can, and I help start the enterprise risk team at, at Asina, so part of that group. But this is, this is the sweet spot for this, for me and where my team is from a maturity. Uh, it's in that IT space. We are gingerly moving outside of IT into some other analyses. And then I know Jack had mentioned it and other people have mentioned it, just run it and run it and run it. Just start your analyses. Um, that bottom left bullet about bringing in the SMEs and the lines of business to me is um, takes away most of every challenge that we've gotten. When, when we have 13 different functional areas or lines of business weighing in on what it would cost to remediate, what it would cost from a notification standpoint, what it costs for our external counsel, that rigor stands up when one of the executives starts challenging that it's it's your individuals who gave us these numbers. If we have a problem with the numbers, we have a problem with our subject matter experts, which are on your team, right? And so um, that was that was really big. I think the, um, you've heard it said, pick and choose which analyses you're gonna do. You don't have to do this in a public forum, right? run the numbers, uh, I, iron sharpens iron, so we annihilate each other when we, when we start presenting on the numbers, the data. Uh, some are fantastic, some numbers were, you know, we're, we're taking a swag with that business unit, right? So um, I, I, think that's the, I think that's the key, um, that when you have a group doing this, it really stands up to the peppering or the individuals who become the naysayers, right? That's all I have. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We can go over, uh, no, no, I mean, I'm, we can go over some of the specifics. I have my obligatory, uh, you gotta have your, your graph slide, right? Which is a fair presentation. Um, this is the same. This is the same analyses broken out in two graphs. Uh, I apologize. This was one of the. This was one of the deficiencies that that was going to uh, compound into uh, a material weakness. But I, I don't know if everyone can see the right hand slide. What the maximum loss would be? Uh, it's twelve thousand dollars, and so to. To say that there were some errors in judgment around the IT controls, uh, that's, that's great. I usually try to model things so that depending on who is looking at it, some people like the graph, and then some people uh, like to see the text. That one on the right is more um, text-based, and it just simply tells you. Uh, we model this 50,000 times. In this model, 80%, I think it's 79%, just 
there was no loss, right? Zero dollars. Uh, and that's if a couple people passed away, and then if three other people were asleep at work for six months, right? Then we've got a, a huge exposure of $12,000. So um, this was, I used this because this was my team's aha moment. This happened to do with um, uh, using default passwords. And so from a security practitioner, my engineers were like, I knew it. You know, I knew that IT team, man, they just are not, I don't know, the hygiene is not there, right? Of course, using a default password on a system is, um, it's, it's serious, it's not ideal. But when we started running the analysis, it was a, um, the, the admin account that was being used, really you couldn't do anything with it. Um, it was a one-time uh, issue, it's not systemic. So the idea of, according to IT general controls, of course, right, that's a check mark. The risk to the business was negligible. We spent 10 times this on the actual analysis, you know, going through um, and, and doing this. So um, that's actually my last slide. So any questions, uh, please let us know.